Hi, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Smashing Skull Sessions. Before we kick off, a shout out to our main sponsors, Rising Sun Breweries, who produce some fantastic beers right here in Cork City. This week, guys, I'm delighted to welcome Bruce Malley and Joel Ward, bassist and guitarist from Pray for Sound. These guys hail from Boston, Massachusetts. One of the finest post-rock, post-metal bands you'll hear, lads. They've been pretty quiet for the last two or three years, so we're probably going to dig dig deep there and find out what's going on. So, guys, welcome to the show. Thanks for coming on. Yeah, thanks for having us. Yeah, happy to be here. Great stuff. So, lads, obviously the first question I was going to ask you, anyway, it's been quiet enough since the release of Waves, if I'm not mistaken, or else I'm living under a rock, I don't know. What's been happening? Yeah, so uh, a lot. A lot has been happening. <laughs> good, good, good. Uh, yeah, uh, mo- mostly good. Um, I would say, uh, you know, we, we released Waves and, um, you know, we had a, a good time releasing it. We uh, we had a lot of tours set up and yeah. uh, obviously those went away. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh, bad timing. Ahead. Yeah, bad timing, Bruce. But yeah, nice. exactly. Yeah, um, yeah. We, we released it right before any of this, you know, pandemic stuff. Yeah. Started and uh, we had no idea, obviously. Um, but we had a China tour set up, a Canada tour set up, and Fuck. a Europe tour set up. Uh, you know, we were we were practicing ninety minute sets. We were, you know, we were ready to to you know really go at it. Fuck. And uh, they, they were they were big big trips, like weren't they? China and Canada. I mean, you, you were thinking, yeah, you were thinking big, like yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, especially in China, it was like a solo. It's just us. Wow. And, uh, we had to play a 90-minute set, and like that's not something we've ever done before. We we're like maybe 45 minutes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So to play twice as long. It's a marathon set. It's a marathon set, especially for uh, Steve, our drummer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, were, were, were you actually requested to play 90 minutes? Or was that just by choice? In China, yeah. Yeah, yeah, we were requested to play that. Wow. Fuck, that's long. That's a long time to. Would have been off. Uh, hopefully, we can make it happen again. Yeah. You know, we got pretty good actually. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just, as it was, so many bands fell into the same pit yeah, as you exactly. did, lads, with COVID. I mean, it upscuttled everybody's plans, especially for touring. Like, and I mean, an album like Waves that came out, and you know, such a big album. I think in in the post rock scene, it, it was a big hitter. Like, it was something a bit different. And dare I say, uplifting. It was very uplifting music. And um, it would have been a freaking joy to hear that live. <laughs> <laughs> so what happened then? Well, as soon as the tours got cancelled, and I mean, did you lose out financially? Was it a, a disaster fee? Uh, no, no, we didn't no. lose yeah. money from it. Um, we, I'm sure uh, some of uh, the people we were working with probably lost a bit. Okay. Yeah, um, I think we lost, like, uh, we bought plane tickets. That's right. For did. our European tour. Okay. We never got that we, yeah, that we couldn't get refunded from. Yeah, yeah. That's a small hit to take, I suppose, yeah. when you consider the big the bigger picture, like yeah. Yeah, yeah, not bad. Right. So I suppose you've had what two <laughs> two and a half years to write new music, have you? We've been yeah, we've been <laughs> doing it. Right. We've um, been pretty much nonstop since we took uh the pandemic happened. Um Steve Steve and I, our drummer, yeah, um, we run a studio together where we record all of our own stuff and we okay. had just expanded in the building that we're in to uh you know build a new live room and a new control room and all that stuff and then the pandemic hit and so suddenly we had like all this free time to just work on our space mm-hmm. so we started doing that um and uh pray for sounds maybe took a little break okay a couple yeah. couple of weeks here and there, I think we took off. We, we usually practice at least once a week, um, get together all as a band and, and you know, play our music and, and hang out and stuff like yeah. that. So we, we had a few weeks off, um, you know, depending on the situation, mm-hmm. uh, you know, some was, you know, our government was locking people down and whatnot. Yeah, 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 yeah I know. You know, we tried to listen, but it, it you know... <laughs> You can't keep us away from the rock. <laughs> <laughs> but you must be a very tight knit group because as you said, Bruce, and I read up on some stuff there when I was doing my homework, um, you meet up, you do literally meet up once a week. Yes. Yeah. Even I mean, with nothing going on, I mean, we're, we're playing the songs or working on something. 
Like yeah. that's that's commitment of deserve our commitment. You know that that's a that's a lot to ask from any band member, isn't it? To meet up yeah. every week. It is, but we we've, we've also been doing it for a long time. Yeah, uh, it's just sort of become a habit. Mm -hmm. uh, Bruce and I started up uh, playing in a band together in uh, 2003. Okay, we were we were doing that, and then uh, Steve and I, our drummer. We've been playing consistently in a band since 2006 together. And that's been our schedule, you know, mm -hmm. practice a week. We pick a day and that's practice day or night or, you know, whenever the hours are, people can squeeze in. Yeah. Uh, are, you, are you far apart from each other, guys? Not really, no. Okay, so it's not, it's never too big an issue here. Yeah, this central location, the studio where we practice, mm -hmm. uh, which is, it is pretty central to us. Okay. You know, we all kind of live around it. So let's get down to some of the nitty gritty questions here. How much music have you written, Les? What's, how much, how much material is already in the bank? Yeah, we've got, a, we've got a lot. Uh, an LP, yeah, a whole one, a whole stuff. LP. Oh, brilliant, we're, brilliant. Next weekend, we're actually supposed to start tracking. Oh, nice, nice. This Friday, this yeah, this Friday. Now, yeah, you're right. Yeah, this right. Friday, we're we're tracking drums. And when roughly do you think that's going to see the light of day? Are we talking the end of the year, earlier even? Uh, I think uh, the goal is to at least get a single out before mm. post fest. Okay. Um, you know, so we can. Uh, we're definitely going to be playing some of that stuff at post fest. Oh, class! Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So you know, we don't really know exact dates, uh, mm. and I don't want to commit to anything, especially with knowing how long uh, vinyl takes to press these days. Exactly. And, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> But sure, but, look, there's no one watching. There's no one watching this, so you can tell me everything. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, I'm happy to. I'm happy to. Uh, yeah, we don't have any secrets. <laughs> um, tell, yeah, I, I, I would love to get out by mid mid summer or so, okay. but I, it might be that might be a challenge. We'll see. And can you give me any indication of what the vibe of the album is going to be? Is this is it reflecting on the last three years, the whole COVID pandemic? It, it takes that into account, I would say. There's definitely a level of that. It's not at nearly as bright and, and happy as Waves was. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, would, I would call it... Um, I would call it, like, a sort of, uh, like, symphonic... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> yeah, it's, there's a lot of triumphant parts, but it's, like... Nice. It's like um, in a, 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 an adventure, you know. It's like an odyssey, mm -hmm. sort of. Uh, you know, like just lots of like highs and lows, big and, moments, uh, big crescendos. Yep. Yeah. Good old, yep. good old fashioned post rock, like yeah. Yeah, there's yeah. definitely some some old fashioned post rock, but nice. with it, it's our own flavor, right? Though you know, of course, of course, it is because I mean, even like as you touched on waves, like that album, like it was very synthesized if you know what i mean it gave yep. is that something you're bringing forward to this new album because yeah that's not... there's some synthesizer in it and um you know that some picky guitar and stuff like that but mm -hmm. i would say this newer album is like a lot more um a lot more aggressive or like rock focused yeah. versus synth focused okay it's not as it's not as light and airy as waves. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Interesting. I'm looking forward to hearing that already. Yeah, and uh, there will be a track come out so in a couple of months. So you're you're yeah. that's, less, the, that's, the, that's goal. the plan. That's the plan. Yeah, Chris, maybe we'll send you a demo. Maybe we'll send you one of the demos to listen to. There's no maybe. That's going to happen, Joe. You have to do that. Yeah, there's, there's no we two have... ways. No two ways about it. <laughs> there's, Before, there's kind of a story behind this, but we did track a uh, or, or track and do video for a whole live session of six of the new songs. Oh wow! Um, and that happened like over a year ago at this point. Yeah. Um, so they've evolved a little bit since then. Okay. And, uh, and it's also missing one of our members, so it's only a four piece during that. All right. Okay. Oh yeah, so uh, I guess I we we sort of skipped over this, but back to the pandemic mm -hmm. pandemic break. Um, we just took a few weeks off, and then we got back together and started writing. Yeah. And um, Steve had a bunch of songs; he yeah. he was just cranking them out. And uh, his style is is you know one of my favorite. He's mm -hmm. one of my favorite songwriters. 
I feel lucky to be in a band with him. He's so, he's just so talented. Yeah. Um, but he, he put out, he gave us a bunch of songs, a bunch of okay. demos. To, and, um, and we, so we just started going. And, uh, during that time, Nick decided that he uh, wanted to take a break for a little while. So, yeah. So he stepped away and, yeah, and Nick wasn't a part of pray for sound for a little while. Um, even to the point where we thought, you know, maybe we should be a different band. Maybe like we'll hang up, pray for sound and we'll start a, start a fresh project. And, uh, no way. That, you actually talked about that. Close to that. Wow. Yeah. Wow. That, that's big news. Jesus. Yeah. And that that's because of one man or one person potentially leaving the band. You wanted to, uh, it was this thing. So of the original five of us, it was the second person to leave. Okay. And right. um, as you know, the creative types yeah, were yeah, yeah. And to move on, you know, <laughs> or to do the next big thing. Taking all the ideas away with them, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So during that time, we added a new member, Tom. Uh, okay. An old friend of ours, a guy that's been around the studio quite a bit. Yeah. Um, but we've known for quite some time. Um, he, he ended up joining us and, you know, the four of us at that point thought we were going to be something else. Okay. So working on this music, it was, it still had that pray for sound vibe for sure. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, you know, eventually, uh, we, I think the four of us kind of decided we were going to be pray for sound still at some point. It was like uh, probably a year, a, yeah. about a year of trying to think of like, what's, what's, what's the next, next what's wow. what what can our band name be what like what's yeah. our visual look gonna yeah. be you know what's our whole story you know how do we the, re, how do we get restarted in into the scene and but that's that. the thing you see because you, it, it potentially it could have been a, a breath of fresh air for you you know to try something new yeah. try something from scratch again you know but the hard work that's gone into you since fucking back in 2012 i mean 10 years yeah. like i mean it would be a sin exactly so that, that, that you know that yeah. was what we were weighing is those yeah. things two kind of paths um but yeah after finishing up a bunch of the songs and uh you know just spending some time really thinking about uh, that we decided you know like let's let's keep being pray for sound okay and uh shortly after that nick ended up coming back to us he was hanging out you know <laughs> we're friends where you know, we're no hard feelings yeah of course he was hanging out at the studio uh, regularly when we were practicing and, <laughs> was he outside know, the window sort of listening yeah, 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 yeah. eventually it was like you know nick do you, do you want to do this again? <laughs> and, uh, yeah right so uh and i think i think he was happy to to be asked that and to, to kind of come back in and and uh, for sure that kind of solidified the decision as far as being pray for sound yeah yeah also after playing those songs without you know with with just the four of us no yeah. nick um, and then having Nick come back in, he's, he is such a good and tasteful guitar player. He added in all these layers and all these parts that were just like, oh, finished yeah. off the song so nicely. Uh, it was like, it, yeah, it worked great. out so really, that's, didn't it? it worked out. It did. Yeah, it did. It worked out well, and, and so we do have these, this, this video session that's really well done. Mm -hmm. Um, kind of hanging out on our YouTube <clears throat> privately right now. So I'll send that to you. Oh, dude, that'd be great. That'd be great. Bruce, yeah. it, it, it's a moment in time as far as our writing pretty much, yeah. Uh, yeah. before Nick really fully stepped back in. Nick was actually behind a camera. He was holding the camera during, during <laughs> that. Uh, oh, stop. No way. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And Chris actually, who used to be in pray for sound pre prior. Uh, like uh, everything you're telling me just shows how close a, a group of guys you are, you know, as, as musicians yeah, and friends, you know, it's, it's more. We're our only friends for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Keep your friends and your enemies, everyone closer. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Come here, I, am, I want to talk about Waves because, again, it, it's, it's unfortunate the timing of when that album dropped, but I think it just deserves so much credit for what it did because I think it's, it's definitely something very different to what was going around in the post rock scene at the time, you know, things that scene tend to bring a lot of darker side of music. I think post rock was going down that, that type of avenue. This was definitely a fucking injection like of, of you know, good vibes and positivity, which, which yeah. stra strangely enough, Bruce came from a lot, a lot of time. I think you were struggling with back pain. You were in fucking serious pain, weren't you? When you were writing this album. And it yet uh -huh. to reflect something so positive. Was that Steve? No, that was Nick. Oh, it was Nick. Oh, was yeah, Nick? Yeah. Oh, apologies. Yeah. Okay. Yes. 
Right, Nick, right. Nick rode a pretty good chunk of waves. Mm-hmm. Yes, exactly. Um, Nick, Nick was primary yeah. songwriter for most of those songs. Okay, okay. And, you know, uh-huh. also going through the, the classic uh, American story of being a poor person in, in a capitalist world, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, between between those things, it is kind of a surprise how um, vibrant and energetic that yeah. album is. Yeah, okay. I think he was using that writing to um, to stay positive. Okay. That's I I think you know I don't want to yeah. put words in his mouth, but mm-hmm. I heard him talk about it enough times. <laughs> <laughs> I'll put words all over his mouth. But, but just for everybody who I don't know, who doesn't have, doesn't have a copy, even though they should, like really, this is the album, guys. And I don't know, can you notice? But my my dog took a liking to it as well. He actually oh jeez <laughs> he, he bit he bit the corner of it, a pop. But um, this album, lads. It, the artwork as well, obviously, waves. We have waves. Is it sound waves? What is it? Right, what's the, right. What's, what's behind it? Tell me. The artwork. Is there a story behind that? Um, not, not really. Not, I think we were just looking for something that fit the music, the vibe mm-hmm. of the music. And uh, I, I, uh, Nick found, um, I think her name is Rachel. Rachel, yeah. Um, okay. On Instagram. You know, just scrolling Instagram and and found her there, and uh, we reached out to her and and told her the album name, I think, and she had some artwork that kind of had that that okay. vibe of okay. the album already, and um, you know, we were like, we really like this, and uh, we really like these other things that you incorporate, and mm-hmm. um, you know, that's what came out, and we really liked it. And and how easy was Waves to make after? Because you know, we. Uh, uh, Wait, the waiting room, our waiting room, sorry, was released back in 2018, which was a very lo fi ambient sort of a, an album. And then to go from that to the huge burst of energy that, that came in waves, <laughs> pardon the pun there, like, but anyway, was it intentional? Did you purposely oh, we, say we need to lift ourselves after? The uh, it was more the opposite. It was like, uh, we, we planned on, we like, we like playing rock. We like yeah. jamming. We like head banging. Yeah. So um, it was more like waiting room was like a, let's step back and write something chill, yeah. different. Uh, mm-hmm. Get ourselves out of our usual spot. Exactly. Okay. Okay. So heading back into when we when we got to waves was was actually even easier maybe because it was like the where we like to be. Yeah. 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 I get you. And I mean, don't uh, don't get me wrong for a second, like. Waiting Room is an incredible album and I love to chill out to it. It is a cracking album. Like, but Yeah, thank you. I just think Waves hit me when it came out in 2019. It was yeah. just something so energetic. You know, it was one of those albums you turn, you know, post-rock, everyone thinks you're going to sit down and chill out and on the couch and maybe reflect on right, your book or something like that. Or, exactly. But this was one you could play when there's people around. You could play it on your own, pumping in the car. I fucking loved it. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. Do you still get some feedback on it? Is are people still talking about that album? Uh yeah, we actually we get a bunch of uh we get a bunch of comments about songs on that album pretty mm-hmm. often, pretty regularly. Yeah. Um lots of people like and it's all, all different songs actually. It's never just one song over and over again. It's yeah. everyone likes all, yeah. a bunch of different songs on it. And I suppose you haven't even had a proper opportunity yet to play those songs live. Yeah, have you? Yeah, you know really, what I mean? Really, exactly. Yeah. Um, I think I, I don't know how many shows we got to play after Waves came out. I don't think it was many. No, maybe two or three. Yeah, but but right. I mean, after after COVID started, we obviously weren't playing for a while. We've only mm. played two shows since COVID. You know, wow. uh, two shows, and, man. Uh, and they were just recently. They like, were just recently in yeah. the last two months or or so. Okay, locally in Boston. Yep. Yep. Yeah. And again, what's the, what's the turnouts and the feedback like being back live again after the last two and a half years, last two years? You know, really good. Yeah, I really think. good, for um, sure. We've mm. been practicing like crazy playing those new songs. I think uh, we when we played our these shows that we did recently, I don't think we played any tracks off Waves. Yeah, right, right. We've we just played oh. our new We've moved. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's kind of a bummer and... Uh, I mean, at the same time, we love our new stuff too. So yeah. it's like waves to me. 
you know, we put it out and it's almost like it didn't happen. Uh, it's kind yeah. of what you're talking about, right? It, it's a, yeah, I know, I know what you're saying and I understand where you're coming from. And it's just such a pity. I mean, I spoke to, again, two or three bands here on this show over the last few months and even We Lost to Sea had the same issue, you know, the lads when they brought out their, their, their last their current album, which are only finally touring now. But that yep. album sort of stood dormant for a year or two, which, you know, it depends how you actually take it. Do you say, fuck it, it's in the past, or do you say, right, we have to drag this album along with us and get, <laughs> and give it the recognition it deserves, you know? So I really hope you play a lot of it from here on in because those tracks deserve to be played live, you know? They're, a, they're great songs, I think, for festivals in particular. Absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Uh, what we've learned from playing all these festivals is that they're, especially with post-rock bands, is, you know, we're having a blast. We're having fun, you know? Yeah, so yeah. we're trying to, you know, have a party and, and whatnot. And, and there's all this, like, doom and gloom going on. And, and we're, <laughs> we're, we're, you know, that's part of why I think Waves came out the way it did. Yeah, okay. for sure. Okay. Well, look, I'm going to give everybody a taste of some of that Waves album. This is all the days, guys. Have a listen to this to see what you think of this track. So there you have it, lads. That is all the days from the album Ways back in 2019. Incredible album, um, full of energy, full of just, I don't know, high, high intensity, high octane energy. I love it. Guys, I, I, we discussed uh, the album Waves, obviously, and since play a big part in your music, you know, um, more so than some other post-rock bands would have. Is it an integral part of your sound or is it something that you just played around with for a while and maybe move, will move away from? Um, I would say that it's become a pretty integral part of our, of our sound mm -hmm. because, um, you know, a synth, especially, uh, especially like, you know, a nice pad just yeah. fills up space, um, in a song like other instruments can not do. And, um, uh, you know, I already, I know I already gave Steve a bunch of compliments about how great of a musician he is, but yeah. Steve is like a master of that um and like in composition and um he's his grandfather was like amazing piano player and so that okay. trans okay. You know, he showed steve a bunch of stuff so was, <clears throat> you know not only is steve amazing drummer but he's also a great piano player great guitar player great bass player all that stuff yeah and so you put anything in his hands and it's a good choice yeah uh, he loves he loves some synthesizers so you have to, you, you have to be jealous of those guys don't you who can do everything yeah <laughs> yeah right at, at one point well, we were talking earlier about how we were potentially going to be another band he was yeah. suggesting that maybe he switched to synth which i think joe and i were kind of like 
you know, absolutely not. You're, you're yeah. an amazing drummer. <laughs> like, I mean, <laughs> Steve's one of my favorite drummers, like period. Uh, okay. So, you know, I, I couldn't possibly suggest that switch, but no, um, no, no, definitely not. But again, it just shows you where, where your head's were back that time, considering yes. band change, position yeah. changing within the group. Yeah. Yeah. How different things could have been. It's, it's, it's one of those yeah. revolving doors or whatever they call them, sliding doors. Yeah. Moments. And uh, t- can you tell me about the Boston scene, guys? Post rock boys, even our post music, you know, whatever you want, you want to define it as. Is it in a healthy place? Um, I think I think um, post rock in in America in general is mm. not that great. Yeah, okay. the, the scene isn't huge. It's mm-hmm. not like I feel like you can go to Europe and. Um, and play a bunch of shows and there will be people at every show yeah in america it's not quite the same okay i think there's not as many i mean maybe it's just because it's such a big country you know so everyone's yeah. not so centrally located but um there is a scene you know mm-hmm. we have there's a there's a bunch of awesome bands out here i mean yeah. in boston in general has always had a thriving music scene okay no matter the genre okay you know there's all all kinds of music in boston um but there's a, a bunch of great post-rock bands um you know caspian is from yeah. around here yeah. junior is from around here um uh glacier glacier uh geary geary yep um so we're gonna, yeah we're gonna forget people so <laughs> uh, <laughs> right. again what's just have so many bands there like it's incredible yeah it really yeah. is yeah um so so many great bands so I think in that way, the scene is in a, in wonderful shape. Okay. Because there is a lot of excellent music coming from here. Yeah. She's playing, a, playing a concert in Boston. Um, hit or miss. Okay. You know, okay. sometimes well attended. It's sort of, sort of one of the reasons why we don't play out so often. You know, we're not trying to saturate. Exactly. Exactly. Presence and, have less people come to each show, mm-hmm. you know, so we make, a, we make a bigger deal out of each show. Yeah. Sort of post rock way anyways. <laughs> it is the core. And I suppose there's the expense then of having to travel further afield. And I suppose you do need to maybe tie in with two or three other bands if you want to make something work and make it happen. Yeah. Certainly for even one off shows, you know, it's usually at least three bands. We prefer yeah. three bands, um, but you know, uh, sometimes four or five, Okay. And again, when you say to make it happen, does, does nothing really be made from it financially? It's a case of getting out there and playing. Not, and not really. Not really. We, we yeah. love playing shows. Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, yeah. We, we do it for the love of it. Um, exactly. Exactly. We can usually, yeah. you know, break even on the night, pay for gas, pay for food and whatnot. Yeah. Um, but we're, you know, not living lavishly, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> but look, it brings me on to my next question, I suppose is all about festivals. I mean, festival season is approaching, like, you know, you see, on, if you see on social media, there's new festivals dropping every day of the week, you know, there's so much. Yeah. And, and again, I was lucky enough to witness you guys back in 2017 at Dunk, um, which was an amazing experience. So I just want to talk about that experience for yourselves as a band coming from the States over, like, yeah. uh, uh, Dunk. you obviously look back fondly, Bruce, like, oh, yeah. Yes, yes, <laughs> yeah. very much so. Uh, that was a dream come true for me, you know. Yeah, yeah me too, for sure. Bucket list, um, dunk festival in general. That's like one of the, you know, yeah, one of the big post rock ones. Um, mm-hmm. You know, if you told me that we were gonna play dunk back when I was putting out monophonic, I would have, I, I would have been like, oh shit, we made it. You know, we're, we're- <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly. And that, that's that's how it feels because everyone again I speak to to make the, the stage at dunk is is probably one of the highlights of your careers, like. Absolutely. You know, no matter how far you take it from here on in, but that that that's probably a special moment in time, isn't it? Oh yeah. It oh, certainly yeah. is. Actually, let me show you this real quick. Oh yeah. Oh class. Oh brilliant. Yeah. <laughs> that's I was, uh, yeah, I was sort of to the left hand side of the stage, I think. So I'll have <laughs> keep keep an eye out for me without the glasses. But yeah, <laughs> a fantastic show. And again, the dunk people like are just so Jesus. Oh yeah, wonderful people. Wow. Dude, yeah. Wout is like the nicest guy. I Absolutely. love Wout. Yeah. yeah, yeah, 
Now tell me, is there any chance of you ever coming back to another Dunk Festival? Is it something you would like to do? I know it's yeah, up to them. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. We were hoping to get back there this year. Um, okay. But, didn't work. you know, out. I think uh, I think because of the pandemic and everything that was happening, they had so many bands. They, they could choose from every available band because everyone wants to get back out there course, and do it. Of course, yeah. So, you know, we didn't make the cut this time, but... I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure if they if they invite us out there again, we'll be there. Absolutely, and again with a new album, please God, next year as well to tour. with it all yep. makes it all makes sense. Yep. But look again, that brings me on to post festival. Then, guys, I mean, I'm in Indianapolis. Um, I don't have the date here, but um, what yeah. an in, an insane lineup! Oh yeah, wow, it's amazing. Yeah. It, yeah, it's crazy. I think I was looking at the the poster and kind of reading off bands, and I think I decided that like the th first three lines could easily be uh, all headliners. Absolutely, so, absolutely, yeah, yeah. You know, very uh, grateful to be on on this one. And and you uh, look at and you look at that poster, Bruce. Like, and you see the names of the bands, and you say, "Why isn't the scene bigger here?" You know, when you look yeah. at those names on paper, like, well, I think post is doing a great job mm. at making the scene. They're okay. like even almost single-handedly creating the American post-rock scene. Okay. Right, and diversifying it as well. Um, you know, there it, there isn't just pure post bands on yeah. these more, which is awesome. I think it's, mm. it's great to break up some of the, you know, uh, non-vocal bands and have some vocals in Absolutely, there. Absolutely, yeah. Add some math rock, some 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 metal, some you know. It, it's it's cool. It's it's awesome. Yeah, it, it is great to mix it up a bit of diversity in something different because three days of instrumental music, as much as it sounds fantastic, you know, you do like to mix it up a bit and hear something else. Yeah, you know? it, it, right. You you get to the like fifth or sixth instrumental band in a row, uh, and you know, I love post rock music, but it yeah. gets. You know, it gets a little, it's not as impactful. How about that? That's exactly, that's the perfect way to describe it, Bruce. Well done. You saved me from trying to do that. <laughs> but look, <laughs> you, you look at the bands like, I mean, Holy Fawn, Still Motions, I Hear Sirens, Whalefall, Old Solar, Lucy the Dare. Like, I, I don't know, every band there deserves, deserves a, a headline position alone, you know? I mean, it's going to be interesting how it all develops. Do, uh, do, you, do you know when you're playing or at what stage in the day you're playing or anything? Has that been set in stone yet? Um, I don't think we're supposed to announce it yet. Okay, okay. Um, <laughs> no, we don't. <laughs> <laughs> we, we're we're uh, planning some dates around that 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 post-festival, so uh, we, we needed to know what day we were playing okay. so we, accordingly. So you're going to have a few warm-up gigs? Yep. Yep. Um, you know, we're coming from Massachusetts, so we got to kind of go across the country a little bit. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, we'll have a few going out there, and I think we have one coming back. And are you falling in with one or two bands that you can name for those gigs? Um, we're not sure yet about Yeah, about right, right. Oh, so yeah. that's a possibility, but... That and that's that's the truth. I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's almost cheeky. Oh, don't yeah, know. Jesus, you need to work on your poker face, Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> we just started planning those shows, so no we'll worries, see. no worries. That's done. I keep, I keep, I keep an eye on social media to see who joins you. But obviously, that that will be the plan. Though, wanted to get two or three bands together. In yeah, that sense. Yeah, it, it, I mean, it always is. Uh, that, I think that's ideal. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And. What does the future hold for Post Festival, do you think, as is it going to get bigger and better? Is is it in a good place? Are the guys doing, as you said, they're doing amazing work in getting it to where it's at? I mean, if it keeps going like it's going now, they've yeah. already moved to a new venue since the last time we played there. And uh, mm -hmm. the new place looks awesome. Okay. I'm sure they're learning a lot every year, you know, and applying yeah. those, those uh, new learnings. Um yeah, it seems like it's going great, and it's it. It seems like it's only going to get bigger. They're going to get bigger bands and uh, more bands interested. And yeah, you know, it, right now it's a two day event. You know, maybe eventually it's a three day event, like mm -hmm. Dunk. Yeah, exactly, exactly. If these things take time, you know, they do develop and they do grow. Yeah, but come here again. We spoke about the whole scene anyway. Like we we do we all agree that it's in a good place. Post music as a whole, not just post rock. Like and again, post yeah, festival yeah. is is 
show us how big it is in the States and how big it's potentially getting, you know what I mean? You've yeah, had, so, I mean, many, if, you've had uh, so many bands come over to Europe, haven't you? Bruce, I mean, like, Dunk has had ranges, has pillars, oh, yeah. yourselves, you know, you name it. Like, you've, you've been uh, a Shia Love is another one. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. It's in a good place. So tell me, lads, yourselves, so for the next few months, it's all about practicing for playing live, or are you still writing material? Right now, I think it's more about recording the material than it is practice. I think all of us feel very well practiced at this point. Yeah. Uh, with the new material, at least. Uh, so we're going to, you know, dive headfirst into recording uh, our new material. Uh, you know, hopefully February, March is, you know, we, we get most of the tracking done. Yeah. Uh, and from there, I'm sure we're going to dive back into uh kind of figuring out a set list and uh practicing for some live stuff yeah great stuff great stuff it all looks good guys the future looks bright as far as i'm concerned for for pray for sound and and i'm delighted to hear that you went you got through that sticky patch during covid you know things could have been very different so it's, it's nice to see you come off the other side a couple of questions i put to you there lads in last week three questions as just for a bit of fun and i'd be curious to hear your answers in this if you could record a cover version of any track, past or present, lads, what would it be? Individually, you, um, can, you can speak on your own behalf. That's actually, that's a funny question for us because we always joke about that and yeah. always joke about the different songs that we could do with like, oh, let's do a post-rock version of this song. <laughs> yeah. My favorite one is the, go the my go-to one that I always suggest is uh, Smooth by Santana featuring oh, Ryan. <laughs> Very um, smooth. I like it. Yeah, yeah that's a that, that's a hit right there. So have have you actually jam jammed it? Have you done it? Uh, we have like oh. just messed around with it like a tiny <laughs> bit. I, again, just as a joke, like just for fun. <laughs> yeah, you know? exactly. Bruce, what about yourself? Yeah. So, um, one thing I was just going to add to that is, uh, you know, our guitarist Nick. He seems to like know every song ever written. So we end up uh, jamming on random covers yeah. most yeah you know between songs we'll be like all right what are we playing next you know yeah and all of a yeah. sudden you play a riff and we'll you know jump into that um so uh one of the ones we've been kind of talking about lately and and joking but maybe semi-serious about um you know we're we're playing post fest again mm -hmm. uh is uh, uh the boys are back in town by thin lizzie ah sure uh, <laughs> so you know Maybe we'll play that at post. We've been we've been talking about it a little bit, um, which I think would be very fun. Oh, you know, it would be. In, oh man, that would be great fun. Jesus, the place you know, would... the, whole, the whole crowd just kind of enjoying themselves being at post. Uh, probably a lot of people there will be there uh, for a, a second time, or at yeah. least you know, uh, there again. So uh, I don't know. I think that's that's funny. <laughs> it would be a great party track. Like it would lift lift the exactly. roof of the place. Exactly. Yeah. I'd love to hear a recording of that. If that happens, I hope somebody records it on their phones. Um, lads, if you could be a guest on stage of any band, past or present, if you could have walked on stage with any band in the world, who would it have is been? This, with this question, is this playing with them? Yeah, playing or with them. Playing with them. Um. So uh, I I'll I'll go first. Um. Sure. Uh, my problem with that is. I feel like any band that I look up to enough to want to do that with, maybe I'm not worthy of or talented <laughs> enough to join them on stage. Right. I wouldn't want to ruin their music. <laughs> yeah. That's, that's where I was thinking. Too. But, um, <laughs> and so like, you know, I'll, I'll name a few bands, but shame but then, on. Let's pretend you're better than what you think you were. And who would you, who would you walk on stage with? <laughs> I mean, holy crap. I mean, Zeppelin the Beatles. Yeah. yeah. Um, my God, Pink, Pink Floyd Pink comes Floyd, to yeah. mind for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. Those, um, I, those big stadium rock of the 70s so was, it appeals. Yeah. Yeah. yeah and, and I mean, some of those bands don't, don't really, I mean, most of those bands don't exist anymore. So it would be, <laughs> uh, it would be really special to, to be able yeah, to. Yeah, it would have been. A great, a great time for music, actually, isn't it? When you think back to the likes of Zeppelin yeah. and Floyd and Sabbath well, yeah, and I mean, all these bands. Wow. Amazing. Yeah, amazing stuff. So the last album you listened to, lads, before you came on, what was the last album that you played on your headphones or in the car or wherever you traveled? Um, so again, let me preface this answer with uh, <laughs> I'm a 
<laughs> I've I come from a from like a pop rock background. Are you okay. gonna be? You know? No, I'm not embarrassed at all about it. I just know, you know, we're talking about post rock and you know metal and all that stuff. But I'm a at deep down in my soul, I'm a I'm a fan, big fan of pop music okay. and uh, pop rock and stuff. So while the second to last album I listened to was Dark Side of the Moon, <laughs> the most recent album I listened to all the way through was. Blue by Third Eye Blind. It was their their second okay. Third Eye Blind second record. Some good songs on that one. Well, you feel you had to bring in Pink Floyd just to balance it a small bit before you came out. That <laughs> well, answer. I was I was looking. I opened my Spotify just to look. And be like, oh yeah, like what was the last album I listened to all the way through? And it was it was uh, Blue by Brilliant. Third Eye Blind. But I was like, oh, do I like? Right before that was <laughs> was Dark Side of the Moon. Do I? No, you let, let's be honest. Let's be but real. It, it's great to have such a vast musical taste, isn't it? Like, it's it's nice not to be pigeonholing yourself to any sound or any style. Like, it's great. Yeah, I mean, pray for sound. All of us, we listen to everything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I, I'm um, assuming Bruce, you're checking your Spotify list. Yeah, here. that's exactly yeah. what I'm doing. Yeah. Uh, Go on. So I just uh, drove drove here. Uh, you know, a moment before we started this podcast, I was listening to Astronoid on the way over here. Great album. Uh, they have a new album, uh, Radiant Bloom. That's right. I had to listen to it as well. Yeah, really enjoyed it. Yeah. So I've been uh, lately checking out some of the bands I don't know on the post festival very well. Yeah. Uh, I, and I know them, but I didn't. I hadn't heard that album yet. So uh, that's the last one I checked out. And I think before that was uh, Appleseed Cast, also on post. I was on this. And the, and the post best roster, yeah. But again, there's so much new music out there as well. I suppose that's something else that you have to contend with, isn't it? Constantly coming, constantly coming, and it's like um, I can't keep up with it. No, I can't either. And it, it, it's a killer because some albums that you know are going to be instant classics, you can't give them enough time because there's a wall <laughs> of music coming at you. Like you know, it's it's right. it's nonstop. Yeah. One last question, guys. If, if you want to just drop a band name to look out for this year, anyone that you want to. Give a shout out to any album coming up. Oh, boy. I know, right? Well, this uh, band that we know called Pray for Sound is putting an album. <laughs> <laughs> you know I, hear, I, I hear they're I, gone. I heard there's a new band came in and said, "Joe, am I right?" No. <laughs> I, um, you know, I, I'll, I, I've got one in mind. I, I don't know that they're going to have a new album this year. That I think uh -huh. they're writing right now, but. Um, I've become really good friends with Mark from We Lost the Sea. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, I hope they come out with a new album this year. I would love to hear it. I've heard some of the kind of demos they've worked behind the scenes and stuff. And yeah. uh, I think that that's going to be whatever they put out is going to be a killer album. So I'll go with them. Great call. Great call. Again, as you said, Mark is an absolute star, like uh, one of yeah. the nice, nicest guys in, in music, not to mind any genre. Him, him and I have become really good friends i can say that and yeah. uh you know i he actually uh you know kind of to bring this back to pray for sound selfishly um he uh at one point him and i were kind of exchanging some riffs and one of the new songs started from a riff that he wrote okay um that, that particular riff didn't actually end up making it into the song but it kind of inspired the rest of it and uh really cool to like kind of collaborate that way it is. And, and that's the beauty of technology today. You can do these things. He's in Australia, you're in the States. You could fucking share and mix music. Exactly. It's mad, so, isn't it? What about yourself, Joe? Tell me a band to look out for. Have you anyone in mind um, that you think people should give a, a bit of time to? Yes. <laughs> Let's. Don't say, don't say pray for someone again, please. <laughs> yeah, no. I, I'm, uh, I've, I've already. Uh, strokes my own ego enough here <laughs> um, there's a band uh they actually are recording at our studio right now they're called talk chalk okay they're not a post-rock band they're uh -huh. like or hey, what do you even call them yeah they're like um spooky spooky vibey <laughs> pop rock um they're like sort of um they're sort of a little absurdist almost like b50 okay. absurdist um but they are so much fun 
they are an amazing live band. Yeah. Uh, and is this their first album, Joe, or have they have have they other material? They, I think they might have, EP. Yeah, they have okay. a short and little out there, but they're working on a, a full length guy right okay. now. Great stuff. Nah. Uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to hearing that. That's the job, Joe. Thanks for that. Yeah, it's great to hear a new band. I love people dropping names of bands. It's you know, that's what it's all about, isn't it? This 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 genre that we're in and this underground scene that we're in. It's just great to be hearing new names being thrown around. Oh yeah. Um, Guys, all I can say at this stage is, look, Mir, thanks for taking the time out to chat to me. Guys. It was it was a good, good laugh. I enjoyed that. I really did. Um, <laughs> yeah, thanks for being interested in talking to us. <laughs> that's great, guys. Mir, thanks for that. No. Yeah, yeah, awesome. Awesome. It's great nice stuff. to uh, have a, a fun conversation and not just be so serious. Same thing with the music, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to have fun. And I probably yeah. guess that would be the case when I spoke to you because I know your music is, is fun and I see your social media stuff and the way you chat to people, I think it's all good, good fun and good banter, yeah. you know. It's great to see, like, um, <laughs> and I forgot the fucking Irish connections here. I said I'd ask you a few questions. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But we can always put that in because the editing thing, you never know. Yeah, sure. We're but ready what, for it. Have you connections in, in from Ireland? Have you family or have you a family tree you can look back on? Have you done like a 21 and me um, or whatever? Yeah, actually, I do have, I did a, uh, I did one of those, whatever it's called, Ancestry. Ancestry. Yeah. Let's see. While he looks that up, I, yeah, you know, I, I don't know of any connections out okay. there i've never been to ireland either which is a shame but um okay. my son's name is finnegan <laughs> is it yes um, how, how, what made you pick finnegan how did that come about uh, well you know i i mean i really like uh the the, the sound of it to be honest okay. uh, i do have a lot of uh, irish background um and uh my my partner significant other does too so okay I mean, you don't get much more Irish now than Finnegan Mally. Yeah, Finnegan. Jesus, yeah, right. Bruce, exactly. man, that, that's mad, like, isn't it? It's brilliant. <laughs> brilliant. He's a, it's actually showing me up here. That's more Irish than me, that name. I mean, come on. <laughs> I mean, this is Boston. There's, There's a lot you of, know, lots of Irish. Is yeah. that, that's, this is it, you see. Yeah. I mean, we, we fucking spent hundreds of years traveling over to Boston. Like, I mean, all the Irish. Yeah. Have you found your connection, Joe? Uh, you know, it's very vague. Um, but you know how, uh, I don't know if, I don't know if they even have these in Ireland, but in America, they love these, the maps that have, uh, all the names. Yes, of the we do. Yeah. We have that too. Yeah. Where this, where people are from and, um, Aylward is on there. Okay. Uh, I think it's sort of towards the, um, I think it's sort of towards the bottom right. Okay. <laughs> the bottom right. No you're, bottom. You're, you're testing my geography skills here, but I'm going to say that's Wex, <laughs> that's Wexford. <laughs> okay, uh, I'll actually check that up myself now when, when we go off here, just to see where where you actually originated from, Joe. We we'll see. Yeah, I could, I could be totally wrong though. Yeah, sure. Look, you said it. Anyway. It sounds good. If it goes on the show, it sounds good. Cool. <laughs> and I've uh, also I've been to um every irish bar around here oh yeah so <laughs> which is a lot of them yeah most of I them can imagine and what do you drink in these bars joe what's your uh, tipple um i actually like a guinness yeah that's usually my go-to um but i'm a beer guy so any beer especially a dark one sign me okay. up i talk it on. and bruce just said what, what do you drink out of curiosity i'll drink a beer if they're around but i don't really drink beer uh okay. i've I prefer a whiskey, um, oh. either mixed or just straight. Oh, a real man, Joe. And we have a real <laughs> man in, in our presence. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, come here, lads, I let you go there because I take up too much of your day. Um, again, thanks for coming on, lads. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> you know, uh, I, I, like I said, guys, I'm a fan of your music. Like, it's as simple as that, you know. I, I've been a fan since, I suppose, I didn't, I wasn't around during Dreamer, but everything is beautiful. It was when I first started to grab onto your sound and, and it sort of went from there. Um, so all I can say is I can't wait to hear the new album uh, whenever it does come out again before the end of the year hopefully we'll have something to look forward to in our album of the year list and of course yeah. post festival lads I wish you all the best at that it Thank looks insane much. it should be incredible and um, hopefully I might get in touch with the post festival guys actually to come on the show before it happens and then uh, we'll get more chat going yeah hell yeah so Joe 
Bruce, thanks so much, guys. Uh, look after yourselves, and we'll see each other at some stage down the road, no doubt. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah, I hope so, too. Uh, Thank you thanks. for having us. This was great. No bother at all, lads. Thanks again. So there you have it, guys. Pray for Sound from Boston, Massachusetts. Post-rock, post-metal, whatever you want to call it. It's just fantastic music. Um, and catch them live at post-festival. As the lads mentioned, they'll be playing a few gigs probably before and after uh, summer in the locality. So keep your ears and eyes peeled. That's it, guys. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Thank you to Richie from the Metal Cell podcast who edits. And he has a big job here editing this one. Edits and produces the show. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> i see you all in a couple of weeks time. Cheers.